Okay, now I think you can see me. Hi, everybody. Hopefully you can hear me too. I'm thinking that you can. So if somebody wants to just add a quick comment in the chats to let me know that you're seeing me and hearing me, that would be great. Great. Thanks, Julia. Great. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for your patience. I had this scheduled for weeks and then it didn't turn on. So wow, wow, wow. Where's everybody, where's everybody watching from? Throw, throw up your location there. Lots of um, familiar names. This is going to be really fun tonight. Holly, Julia, Audrey in Oregon, Teresa, hi. Well, okay, so I think probably a few of you, if not most of you, have done this with me before. I, I'm, I was surprised to see that this is my second plus year of doing these Ask Me Anythings. I can't believe it. I probably do them about once per quarter, and I always intend to do them more often, and then, as we know, not life gets busy. But I love doing these. I love that they're spontaneous. I love that it feels like we are all together cuz that's how it feels to me. I just feel like you are walking into the room and we're having this time together. Oh fun. Alberta, Canada. Oh Nancy on vacation. Minneapolis. Hello. Well, um also as you might know if you've watched this before, this is pretty unscripted. This is very casual. I don't have anyone moderating. It's just me. And so um, I, you might have discovered already, if you want to participate, as in leave a message or ask a question, you do have to subscribe to the channel. I've also put um, delays on repeated comments. The, the delay is, I think, 60 seconds. The reason I do, I'm doing both of those things is I'm hoping to minimize um, participation from anyone who, you know, isn't really invested in, in what we're doing here. And so I'm just sort of hoping to kind of put up a couple of filters here that help us just stay with, um, you know, those of us who are interested in spirit and things that are psychic and metaphysics and, and ask and answer great questions and have a great discussion. So that's why the, I've got these things in place. So thank you for your patience and the messaging delay, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, first of all, again, for those who may not know, I'm Megan O'Leary. I am a psychic medium and shamanic healing practitioner. I've been working with clients and students in Seattle for 20 plus years now. Um, I had conduct one-on-one -on -one sessions privately in my office or remotely anywhere in the world. Um, I offer psychic medium readings, medical intuitive readings, um, all kinds of readings. I am, as I said, a shamanic energy medicine practitioner. And so in that line of work, I help people clear their energies and clear cords, uh, offer uh, shamanic soul retrieval ceremony, all different kinds of earth medicine modalities designed to help us with our energy bodies. Because I know you know, um, minding your physical health, your emotional health is of course vital, but you want to remember to mind the spiritual side of things, the vibrational side of things. And so that's the world that I live in, that that's the world where I bring forward from spirit, from earth, healing modalities and tools to support you. I'm also a past life hypnotherapist. And so I offer past life regressions. Um, and that's uh, a whole nother realm of incredible medicine. 
Uh, I have classes. I have workshops upcoming for the rest of 2023. I think I just have one so far planned coming up probably in October, a spirit circle class, which I've um, only done one so far. This will be the second, but um, this is a class designed to um, have a group of us come together remotely in a private setting where I share with you um, tools and processes and exercises and information around psychic development, spiritual practice. Um, this is a good class for practitioners. It's a good class for someone who is not practicing but has is interested in their development. And it's even accessible if you're kind of new to this. So if you're interested in staying up to date on my offerings and classes and any other news I have, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I'm active on Instagram and Facebook. I always put notifications there so you can join me there. In 2024, um, I have an upcoming six-month transformational mentorship series, and that's something you can read about on my website uh, if you want more information, if you're looking for um, a longer-term, um, more deeply committed, more um, a, a deeper approach to your spiritual practice, personal development, personal growth, coaching, that's something to perhaps look at. My website is meganoleary.com. Um, so tonight, what to expect? What is it that we're doing? Well, in just a few minutes, I'm just going to open up and look at your questions. And so tonight's about an opportunity to connect with me um, in a way maybe we kind of don't get to. And so if you've had questions on your mind about anything with regard to your spirituality or connecting with spirit, spirit guides, um, if you have questions about um, the afterlife, the death process, um, if you have questions about psychic development, uh, any kind of metaphysical approaches, divination tools, um, anything paranormal. Um, so we kind of cover it all. I got, got to say in 20 plus years of working with you all, sessions and classes and ceremonies and workshops have covered it all, I think. I think there is probably nothing we haven't looked at. So I am open to your questions. I'm also open to um, connecting with spirit for you. So um, likely what will happen is a few people will get to have a reading. Um, so if you have a question of a reading nature, if you have a question about someone who has passed on, you're welcome to ask. I will do my best to get to as many questions as I can. As I said, I'm the only one moderating this. And so I don't see everything all the time. I'm doing a few things at once, um, trying to be a really clear channel to give you the best uh, answers that I can on either your questions or connecting with spirit. Um, and I'm also you know, looking at your questions. So again, I'll do my best. Apologies in advance if I don't get to your question. Um, I do encourage you if if you've asked a, tw a question and it looks as though I'm not seeing it or I haven't commented on it or or answered it, you could try throwing it up in the comment section again. Um, perhaps I just missed it. It, it may also be that I just don't have time for it, but if you're game to try again, if you're, if you're game to, to know that it's just kind of, we all have to go with the flow that that's great. Also, as I always say in these, um, when we get together in this way, um, someone else's question that I will address, whether it's informational or of a reading nature, a, a lot of times the answer and, and the message given could apply to you. Um, spirit doubles down a lot of times. Even if I'm speaking to someone 
who's passed on and the message is for someone in particular here on my comment board, um, you might be surprised that you hear something that resonates or you feel some chills or you feel a loving arm on your back or you feel a little bit of wind and it's not the fan in your room. Tonight, because you're here, um, because we're meeting in this way, energy's getting stirred up. I Before I came live on here with you, I called in spirit, I called in your ancestors, I called in your guides, and I put myself in a position of, of as best as I can to hear clearly so I can share it with you. So let tonight be magical, let it be spontaneous, follow your impulses, pay attention to what you're feeling around you, pay attention to the memories that might drop into your head based on what you hear me say. Spirit's up now. And even if you don't hear me comment on your particular question, uh, that doesn't mean stuff's not happening. Um, also, too, if you're into it, if you want to, and if you're paying attention to the comments, um, if you see someone asking something, or if um, tonight we get into any territory that, you know, might be challenging, you know, um, sometimes our questions are serious ones, and that's okay. Sometimes messages from spirit are, um, you know, have to do with some of our more challenging areas in life. And so feel free in the chat to um, just throw out a comment to someone and say, you know, I'm sorry to hear you're going through that. Or um, think... Uh, thinking of you, I've had that experience. Um, so again, you don't have to, but um, I encourage you to follow any impulses because Spirit's going to ask to deliver messages. And, and if I'm busy talking, Spirit might tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, can you just say to this person, actually, I know, I know what it's like and I, and I'm here for you. Even if you don't know the person, even if we know in about an hour, we're all going to say goodnight. This is an energetic blessing medicine wheel. And so the good stuff um, can ripple, even though we are not seeing each other and we might not know each other. And if you're listening to this way past the time that this was live, same thing applies. I, in, I deliberately, with intention, ask that these YouTube live video chats, um, keep time releasing the good stuff, you know, so that's why um, I think some people get a lot out of watching these even after they've been live. Um, we will um, end tonight with a guided experience I've put together so that you can receive your own message from your guides. So hopefully, if all of you are able to stay throughout, um, this is about the last 10 minutes before we say goodnight, where whether you've received an answer or message from me or not, you'll have an opportunity to do this really great um, experience running energy that focuses on the upper four chakras um, and then culminates in opening up to you receiving your own guidance. And so you, I, I'm excited to try this. If you've taken a psychic development class from me before, some of this, some of it might sound familiar, um, but it's a quick and great and powerful way to get some really helpful feedback yourself. And it also just feels good energetically because we're connecting these upper four chakras with energy and light. And so it's lovely. So I encourage you to hang around for that. Um, like I said, I think a few minutes ago, typically so far, these ask me any things have gone for about an hour, hour and a half. I, I just go till it's done. I just go till spirit says, okay, we're done. <laughs> so it seems like it's falling somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. If you do stay for the end exercise to get your own, um, message from your own spirit, um, I would encourage you to have a pen and paper handy. So I'll just say that to you now to flag it. I'll say it to you again when we're going to start, you know, at the end of tonight. Um, but it, I've, 
I think it's well worth it to be able to jot down what you get, the guidance you receive. You'll be a little bit in an altered state, a little bit in an alpha brainwave state. So writing it down will ensure that later on when you're grounded, you're you're clear and you're in your normal brainwave state of activity that you'll remember all the great stuff you got. You might be surprised the stuff that you get. Okay. Um, I, as you probably most of you might know, I also step into these question and answers that we're going to do tonight um, with intention and prayer. And the reason I do that is my intention for all of you is that what you hear from me tonight serves you well and serves you in the highest way possible. And so um, with that intention, I invite you to take a moment and get square or conscious with your own intention for why you're here joining us. Um, it doesn't have to be a, a great big thing. It's not set in stone. You can just say it to yourself internally. But it's always great to step into spirit work um, with an intention. Um, and that helps to bring you into your body. It helps you get grounded. And even though I'll be the one doing all the talking, still, all of you are holding space for me. I'm holding space for you. You're holding space for everyone who's here. So we want to set that intention. We want to be mindful. We want to be thoughtful and considerate and respectful of all the different amazing sources that are going to provide us with guidance tonight. Intention does that and prayer does that. Um, I am a big proponent of psychic hygiene of the highest level. I am uninterested in talking to any energies that are not for the highest good. I don't have time for that. Um, and I imagine that doesn't serve any of you either. And a prayer to me is setting the intention and also asking for assistance from spirit, from all that is, from our guides to say, we're clear on our intention and we're clear that tonight we're seeking evolutionary information, healing ever information, intelligent information. And so that also ensures the prayer to me that that um, asking for that psychic hygiene then ensures that when we close tonight and we say good night, you know, you, and we all go back into our own worlds, we carry with us the healing, the medicine, the ideas, the inspiration, the information, the learning, all the good stuff. And we are left elevated. We're left inspired. Maybe we're left a little bit healed. Um, that's where we're going tonight. That's the purpose of coming together in this way. And so for a moment, I would ask you to, in your own heart, come into your intention, whatever it is. Take a moment, take a breath into your body. <sighs> come into your body Check that you feel your feet on the ground to be nice and grounded. Check that you have an awareness of your spirit coming in tonight to be with you. Your spirit guides coming in. Your ancestors, loved ones in spirit coming in. Just take a moment to get into a space of acknowledgement and appreciation for all that's happening here. And I'm going to say a quick prayer. A whole creator, mother, father, God, all that is, spirit guides, allies, ancestors, power animals, thank you for joining us in this wheel, in this circle, in this gathering here tonight. We ask that we receive only the good, true, and beautiful of the highest guidance, wisdom, and love. We are deeply grateful for the ability to come together in these learning, sharing ways. We are deeply grateful for the guidance. We are deeply grateful for breath in our bodies, beating hearts in our chest, and this beautiful life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. We embrace you. There is always room for you here. Aho. Okay. Now it's time. I'm going to shift my eyes to your chats, going to look at the questions, and off we go. Um, and if any of you notice anything tech-wise, tech um, how I sound, how I look, just if anything is going wrong on your end, just throw it up in the comments and I'll see if I can do anything. I don't know. But just keep me posted if anything's going weird with what I'm doing on my end. 
OK, um, wow, there's so many great questions already. Let me shift into put my reader hat on here. Hmm. OK, I'm I'm drawn to this question from Amy during my soul retrieval. By the way, if you are not familiar with that term soul retrieval, it's um, um, an indigenous healing practice, earth based medicine. Uh, generally speaking, and it's um, it soul retrieval, I often think is a bit of a misnomer because it does not mean you do not have a soul. Um, but it refers to um, incredible uh, energy medicine ceremony with the goal to help you return to you the parts of your energy or beingness that might have fragmented due to trauma in your life. And so soul retrieval ceremony is um, in, in my world, in my practice, is the highest level of healing that I get to facilitate. And it's, it's incredibly powerful and beautiful. And so Amy asks, during my soul retrieval, I was told that I had a medicine person blown into me. How do I accept and develop this role in my life? And will my recent education decision help or hurt developing this role? Thank you, Amy. I'll, I will, um, I was not involved uh, in your particular soul retrieval. So I'm going to comment on the part you mentioned where you say, I had a medicine person blown into me. So I'm going to comment on what I am assuming that means, but I want to say right up front, I wasn't part of your ceremony. So I, um, if I'm speaking out of turn, you can let me know. What I take from that comment is that the practitioner facilitating your soul retrieval ceremony was in, um, invited, instructed, guided, given the opportunity to blow into your being um, the personification, energetically speaking, of, of the part of you that is a medicine person. Um, so to me, that means a lovely retrieval of a huge part of your life purpose. And so now if I switch gears a little bit and just go into your soul and higher self and ask, and I, I feel like your higher self, Amy, looks at me and says, indeed, indeed, her, she walks medicine feet, which means, um, well, we all do. However, in your case, Amy, it looks to me from a psychic viewpoint, this is meant to be being uh, offering uh, as a practitioner. Um, and so when you ask, how do I accept and develop this role? I feel like I'm hearing you have done that. You answered the call to have this ceremony. Um, you agreed to have that part of your purpose um, returned to you by being blown into you. Um, so that's the acceptance. The development is just, um, I'm hearing for you to stay um, active and clear. And so when you say you've made a recent education decision, that's an example of staying active and clear. You're following your impulse and your um, clarity and your desire and your intention by making an education decision. Now, does this uh, education decision that you're talking about help or hurt developing your role as a medicine person? It does not hurt and it does help. I hear the word, it causes you to expand and grow. It causes you to become more capable in a conscious way. It causes you to grow more strong. Um, being a practicing um, medicine person in whatever way we do it, we're called to this role in so many different ways. It asks us to grow strong internally, which means we have to do some inner work. And that takes commitment and that takes energy. And that's not always easy as anyone who's done it would know. So um, it's helping your decision is what I'm hearing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm shown um, fireworks going off. So that's positive. So wonderful. Congratulations. All right. Um, 
Oh, you're so welcome, Amy. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, okay. I'm going to mindful. And um, of course, it goes without saying, if you put it up on the chat, I there's a chance I'm going to read what you say out loud. I'm likely going to use part of your handle. So having that, having said that, here we go. Um, and remembering to all of us participating, um, we're holding space for each other. This is a healing circle. And so this is a place of support and respect and acceptance. So you get to ask anything you want. And I'll do my best, as I said, to see it, address it, and, and assist and bring forward anything that's helpful. Okay, back to mindful. <laughs> hey, <laughs> what does it mean if I keep getting an STI? Why did I manifest this? What am I supposed to? Okay, there's a few questions in here. I'm going to go with the first one. And uh, so you're asking, what does it mean if I keep getting an STI? Why, why did I manifest this? I'm going to go there first. Um, the first thing I'm shown for you is one of your guys showing me, interestingly, this is somewhat tied to the previous question in a way. I'm hearing... <laughs> this is tied to when you ask, why did I manifest this? Um, you're, um, I'm trying to hear the exact way your guide is saying it. You're uh, um, not struggling. Um, I'm asking to be given another word. And I'm smiling because there's some humor from your guide. You're a stubborn, that's the word. You are a stubborn counselor. <laughs> and what does that mean? Teacher. Your that when you ask why did I manifest this, it's get, it's meant to get your attention to show how you're throwing up blocks to yourself in a way that makes you kind of just um, maybe not laugh, but just get to the point where like really what 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 is going on? So. There's, there's, there's a little bit of um, intentionality from your higher self and your guides um, commenting on and on why the, what's going on in your energy that's making this situation happen, and it's it's I, again I'm not meaning to minimize your experience, but I can tell there's almost like a you like a cosmic. Um, humor to this as in you got to be kidding me and it's I think I'm also hearing that the universe your spirit has been showing thing a few things to you to get your attention you know why are you spinning your wheels when will you let yourself get traction around around what you came here to do and I feel like this is a, in your around in your career and so I'm going to pause and do a sidebar comment to say, for those of you who are here tonight and who have worked with me one-on-one, -on -one, you probably have heard me say this before, but I'll just say it again. If I've read for you before and, you know, if I happen to, you know, recognize your name, um, I'm just, I'm not going to, I just do not remember what is shared reading to reading. And so um, if this is something we've looked at before, I just, I, um, readings are not wired for me to remember them like say a therapist would. And that's because, well, for two reasons. One is that helps me keep doing this work after 20 years and not go crazy <laughs> with everyone's input. Um, uh, it allows me to have a life outside of readings. But more importantly, um, I don't get to hang on to what spirit shares with you at different times, because your when you ask this question tonight, mindful, say, for instance, if you had asked it before of me or any other reader, that's, you know, I'm, that would be valid input for that time. But tonight, you are who you are right now. And so it's very powerful to get information from spirit and your guides um, in the moment and right now, because you might be different than when you asked a similar question before. So 
there's a saying from one of my favorite teachers um, that I'm a um, lifelong student of the Seth material by Jane Roberts. And so there's a phrase that's used in that work called the present moment is the point of power. And you hear that repeated in other wonderful contemporary um, personal growth teachers. Um, but, you know, a long time ago, um, that was that idea was introduced. The point of power is in the present moment. Um, I recall that being introduced, or the first time I got, in, I encountered that concept is in the Seth material. But my point is that this moment right now is your most powerful moment. So who you are right now is who I'm reading tonight. And the question you ask. Tonight, I'm going to read you right now going forward. Okay. So, um, so the reason I bring that up, mindful, is because I don't know if I know what you do for your work. I'm not remembering that. But to answer your question of why did you manifest an STI has to do with your work and career. So where are you pulling in the reins? Where are you pumping the brake? Where are you putting on the emergency brake? When we feel like we need to halt our experience or we don't want to go forward in fully into what we came here to do, most of the time it's because we are lacking confidence, we're feeling afraid, we feel like we can't, all of that stuff we tell ourselves. So I would say to you, if you're wondering, if you want to clear that situation, you might look to your career. What dreams have you put on hold? What things are you not doing to further what it is you really want to do? That's that's where I would look. And let me know if that makes sense to you. I'm going to not um, go into your subsequent questions in that in your comment just because I'm going to move on to somebody else um, if you don't mind but thank you for thank you for being here and asking all of these great questions um okay Alicia writes my mom Gail passed are there any messages from her so let me see kind of over here is where I tend to receive people who have passed on. I feel, um, Alicia, there is a male spirit, interestingly. I'm sort of um, gently bringing Gail in to, you know, this medicine wheel. And to me, that is an indication that Gail is in a state um, where she may still be um, transitioning and integrating her passing experience. Um, I'm noticing that I, while I can feel her presence, she's not talking directly to me. There is this incredibly caring, kind man, almost like holding her arm and elbow, talking to me, saying, it's almost as if Gail, in a way, is um, still waking up or almost feeling not all the way lucid or clear. When I ask him, does this have to do with her passing, I would um, sometimes when people, I tune into those who have passed and they seem a little um, not tracking or a little groggy or not, not able to really track. Sometimes that can be because when they passed away, they were either unconscious or asleep. Perhaps they were heavily medicated and they're still sort of feeling the effects of that grogginess, even though they don't have a physical body. But he says to me, no, no, no. He says, no, she was aware of her passing um, he says she's she's not ready to talk directly with someone like me. So then I ask, well, is there a message Gail can give to you, Alicia? And she, all of a sudden, now we get um, almost this melting, flowing feeling of emotion. And it's just waves and waves, like, like a river current of love. Um, it's interesting to me because 
again, I'm feeling this from Gail, but I'm not hearing the words. I I think there's some reason why she's just not either able or or willing to talk to me in words really directly. She's it's almost um lyrical. Um so she talks about um this this rapidly moving river of love. Um, I feel like she makes me aware of a younger male in the family who is living, um, um, who is aware of her or might be seen looking up or, or talking to her. Maybe this would be a younger male who's reading a book and might seem like he's reading it to Gail. Um, I feel like Gail says there will be more to come in terms of connection that's sharper from her. She's saying, I'm not all here yet. <laughs> I'm not all, I'm not all integrated. I'm not, I am not tracking. Um, so I feel like she's asking, can you check in with me later? Can we pause this? Um, but she's, I, it makes me wonder if she was um, kind of weak or fragile in her passing, because I, I think she's catching up with um, the new state of not having a body and not needing, uh, you know, calling back her strength, calling back her lucidity. I just think she is still transitioning, but she is absolutely being helped. She is also making me aware that there is a mother, her mother figure coming forward to help. Um, I feel like the, her Gail's mother figure coming forward to help says, just give her a minute to get back in the saddle here now that she's home. And of course, home means home and spirit. So um, I don't, th that's what I'm getting, Alicia. I'm not hearing directly from your mother, but she's kind of coming to a little bit. Um, I think there's a time suggestion. I keep hearing for, for a week, for four months. You might ask that question again of either you know your own spirit in your own meditation or dream dreams or if you happen to be seeing a psychic give it about four more months i think that's when you'll get something more concrete okay Ooh, how's everybody doing i just need a minute i'm gonna take a drink of water okay Hmm. Um, Audrey, what does it mean if you keep seeing feathers in your path, even in unlikely places like inside a building? Oh my goodness. That could be a bunch of great things. Um, feathers uh, tend to be what a lot of our loved ones in spirit will um, manifest or manipulate in physical reality. Um you know, a lot of times um, a white feather will have meaning, a, a feather from a specific bird that has meaning for the loved one. So um, it can be from a deceased loved one in earth-based medicine or belief systems, indigenous medicine, shamanic medicines, and a feather coming up for you um, could be the power from that animal trying to get your attention, offering itself perhaps um, as uh, a spirit animal, as a power animal. I'm going to go back to your question here. Um, even in likely places. I'd be curious, Audrey, you know, what, if it's the same kind of feather, the same size, the same color, or if it's different feathers. Um, I also would encourage you to, when you find one the next time, is to pick it up and just internally say, okay, who is this? And go with your first impression. If I kind of switch gears and try to ask your higher self or your guides, um, I feel like this is a feather coming from a deceased loved one, a male, versus a feather coming from the spirit of a, an animal. Um, you know, some people find eagle feathers, some people find um, macaw feathers, and those can mean something from that animal. Um, for you, it feels like it comes from a male. I also will say, I feel like this male is trying to get your attention about something around your health. 
wanting you to not disregard symptoms, particularly symptoms. I feel like I go into the stomach, um, a little bit into the chest, but maybe upper stomach. Um, I almost, I, I would be curious, perhaps, if you have been noticing stomach upset or stomach symptoms in that um, solar plexus area. And I feel like he's saying he wants you to go take care of that, not to ignore it. So um, drop a comment if that resonates, if you know who that would be. Thank you for your question. Okay. Picking up the feather. I'm just sorry to be looking away for so long. I'm just reading everyone's comments. It's a treat to get to read them. Um, hmm. Okay, let me pick one. Oh my gosh, I wish I could answer them all. Um, okay, um, uh, Sierra, my partner Lily has had some medical issues lately, mostly suffering from bad blurry vision. Is there something we can do to help it or a specific doc we need to see? We've seen so many for it already. Okay, your partner, Lily, bad blurry vision. Okay, hang on. Let's see what I get, Lily. Hmm, interesting. The first impression I get is Lily's um, tendency to think analytically which is a great trait, right? So let's see, perhaps um, logic, logic, analytical thinking. So, um, you know, I, I was going to start commenting on the different parts of the brain, creative thinking versus analytical thinking, but I feel like her guides are going, no, 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 let's just skip ahead to, to more about what this is for Lily. But so, so questions, I think the blurry vision are, kind of offering Lily um, would be, you know, where, where is Lily, you know, really clamping down on the over analysis or being, you know, logical to a far fault? Where, where does Lily need to relax into magical thinking or creative thinking or um, abstract thinking is the word one of her guides just gave me um gosh all of a sudden i got an image of lily um at a at a doctorate level of of capability now that's not in this moment it's not saying lily is or needs to be a doctor but there's something about lily's intelligence this lifetime and how she's meant to use it and she she this to me shows up that she has incredible gifts around academia or or being able to bring in a lot of knowledge or wisdom um, um and so uh, it's interesting it's um i feel like the blurry vision is is as encouraging her to um rethink what she's getting information about um what's another better way to say this I'm asking, what does Lily need to do going forward? Um, this feels like it's tied up with education. Like I feel like I feel like Lily just needs the path Lily is on needs to go over here a little bit, like go a different area of study, a different area of credentials or or accomplishment or um, tools or wisdom, so that she can get on the right path. And it makes me wonder now. I get a surge of. I wonder if this wants to be something creative, if um, um, whether it's creative thinking or creative in the body, I just wonder there's there's something going on here that says if she's trying to force being, you know, logical or analytical, that may not be a fit for her. If I go into her eyes or her brain to see, um, you know, what those parts of her body it's not the brain. I go, I go into the eyes. Oh, just got chills. Um, her eyes are telling me she forgot to do what she would dream and imagine. So I know that's not a medical, conventional medical answer. Um, and I am asking for that. I mean, I'm obviously not a medical doctor, but I am asking her eyes if they want to chime in. Like, is there something physically going on that can help? And, and I do feel like, you know, there, 
there there are some physical um, focusing nerve muscle things that are kind of lagging or not tracking. But so far, no one's saying, you know, go take a pill, go get surgery. This is more about Lily going to her childhood and reconnecting, remembering when she was little, like four years old, what did she dream about doing? Did she pretend a lot that she was a dancer or a singer or a poet or a painter? I feel like she lost the vision back then when she went on a track that said, nope, we got to do it this way. So, you know, if I were sitting with Lily in this moment, I feel like that's the big message here. In addition to whatever medical or um, holistic therapy she might be engaged in, it's not saying to stop any of that, but it is saying the key in the lock, the key that helps those medical therapies or you know anything she's doing to help the physical there it's it's not going to budge maybe until she gets into her heart to go back in time and let her be unafraid to remember what is she used to dream about doing and commit to doing that at least in some way if it's not that she wants to change her career maybe that means she can do something uh, uh, you know, as a sideline, she's got to reconnect with that dream because there's a part of her that just doesn't want to see the reality of what she's creating, which doesn't mean it's bad. It just means there's something off register about what she's focusing on and committing to that isn't to, in alignment with those dreams. And I will say those dreams we have when we're little kids their medicine, you know, if you uh, if you remember yourself or ask a sibling or ask a parent or a caregiver, you know, what did I play for hours when I was little? You know, did I pl I play doctor when I was little because um, I wanted to I thought I wanted to be a doctor and I grew up to be one just in a little bit of a different specialty than I might have thought when I was four. Um Rem there's a, a tremendous amount of power in remembering what we did when we were little. Kids can choose a million different things to play with. So when you watch a kid or you remember what you did, there's important information there. Often we can get clues, if not direct um, information on what we came here to do. So I feel like that's what's going on with Lily in her eyes. So I hope... I hope that helps. Wow, we have someone from South Australia. Welcome. How wonderful. I love that. Well, we're heading into fall in the Northern Hemisphere, which means you guys are heading into what? Spring. Is that right? Am I, am I correct? So, um, okay, let me go back here to our list. I'm curious, Helen, where in South Australia, just for fun. Um, hmm. Lee, thank you for your comment. Elizabeth, I'm so sorry for your loss. I really appreciate you making that comment. Sierra, you're welcome. <sighs> oh, I love your guys' comments and questions. Woof feeling moved. Okay, I am. Okay, so Lee, I'm gonna. Okay, Lee, Lee gosh, sorry. Um, I would love to hear from my guides regarding when I should get a passport. Oh, that's kind of fun. <laughs> okay, I feel like they said, um, now. Um, however, I go to October of 2023. Yes, I think there's more though about your passport. I feel like I there is there some would there be something sort of unusual or interesting about your passport? Um, I don't know what this means. I feel like it's a special passport. I don't feel like it's kind of just run of the mill, say like my passport. So I do not know what that means. But hang on, I think there's a little bit more October. There is something so important about October, but it feels to me like 
bureaucracy. I feel I feel a bunch of complexity. And again, I just makes me wonder if you're just have a special passport for some reason. Um, you get through that all. I feel like I want to say it takes a little longer than you might guess. From October of 23, I go to January, February, particularly February of 2024. And I would just wonder if that hinges upon plans that you have and uh, the timing as if it will the timing all work out. I can't shake the feeling that you're I know I've said it, this is the third time now. Your passport is just not a cookie cutter passport. Um, I'm just trying to see if you commented on that. So um, tell me, or if you want more clarification than that, I just, I feel like right now, go ahead and start the process if you haven't already. There's something pivotal about really, really, really jumping through hoops and doing the extra things it takes in October of 23 so that then we get you into early first quarter of 2024 and you're, it's smooth sailing so you can move ahead. Thank you for your question. <sighs> Let's see. Here's an interesting question from Howling Yoga. Could you please share with us any message that Angel in the blue robe behind you. Oh, <laughs> wow. I did not expect the rest of that question to say that. Uh, the angel in the blue robe behind you has for us tonight. That's a great question. You know, that angel, that angel has traveled to my altar from my grandmother. Um, I believe that angel came from Portugal. Uh, I would have to double check that with my mom. Um, wow. I love that you asked that because for fun, I'll look at any question. And as I just tune in to her, I feel like her message is for all of you. And I feel like she's reminding you all she does this. She needs you all to listen. To me, her message um, feels um, pretty high level and pretty universal. Again, all of you must learn to listen more to your own hearts, to your own spirit, to your own mind, your own body. She keeps doing this. There might be something more. Now she's talking to you, Howling Yoga. She said, thank you for, for hearing me. Thank you for noticing. I feel like she just winked at you. She says, good eye. She says, I really am an embodiment of angelic vibration. She's saying the artisan who made me made an angel for a reason. And when... Something is lovingly created and made by a human, but they are asking it to be angelic or to connect with angels. She says, we hear, we hear. So it, angel images are powerful, she says, because we you can talk to us through any angel image. We're listening. She says, it's like dropping... <laughs> Dropping a quarter into a phone booth. Wow. Well, that's gone back a few years. She she laughed. She says, people will know what I mean. You need to call on an angel. You can literally do that. She says to you, Howling Yoga, you do good work in the world. You help people feel that they are held in a state of grace. There is you, they know in your presence, you are not judging them. That you are going to show them how they can reach their dreams and goals, no matter what level of capability they are at. And yes, maybe obvious, but I do think that has to do with your work. She says you do it with those in your family too, your children. 
because you have learned that to do to you have learned to extend that courtesy to yourself and you understand the power of that of not judging that's one of your powers that you give to people and she says thank you great question thank you okay i think i'll take one or two more questions and then we're going to move into that ending exercise I spoke about at the top of tonight, which is, I'll just a quick reminder, um, this will take about 10 minutes if you want to stay for it. Um, I'd love it if you did. Um, you want a pen and paper handy. And it's just merely a pretty simple yet powerful exercise in, that I'll guide you all through where you can Get into uh, uh, sync with your top four chakras, um, a lovely breathing, light, focusing exercise that takes about five minutes. And then from there, we'll be utilizing a mudra, which I'll explain, that you'll gaze into and um, as a divination tool. It's just your own cupped hands. So... That's just a quick little preview of what we'll be doing. I'll, like I said, right, I'll look uh, answer a couple more questions, but I would love it if you would stay for um, the ending exercise. Um, and then we'll, when that's all done um, and you've written down some of your impressions, uh, the intention of that exercise is for each one of you to gain direct um direct revelation, direct information, direct message and download from your own higher self, your own spirit guides, your own inner self. So whether you got your question answered from me tonight or not, you can do this and end the evening by receiving your own message from your own good, true and beautiful soul source powerful stuff and um, the paper and pen is so you can write it down. Okay. We'll move into that in a few minutes. I'll take a couple more questions. Like I said, ah, take a breath. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just going to take a minute and turn away from looking at you to turn to read these comments here. Cause I don't want to miss anything. Um, is it Hallie? Forgive me if I'm pronouncing it incorrectly. Asking for my mom, Sheila Larson, since her phone isn't working, but she is listening. Has her guide Lola been working with her during her sleep? I feel like Lola says, yes. Um, trying to get kind of an alarm, not an, not a, not a, not an emergency alarm, but getting her to wake up, interestingly, if that's been happening during her sleep let me ask just real quickly um oh you added okay so since lately she has been waking up your mom has been waking up thinking of answers to questions she has asked for years to no avail interesting do i have any book recommendations to help with the work she is putting in oh wow um I don't in the moment, but if I do, I will speak. Um, I will share that. Um, I'm just going back to Lola for a second. Yeah, grow, grow. Uh, she shows me your mom. Um, how, how large, how tall, how big, how expanded, how accelerated she has grown in her abilities. Interestingly. I feel like I'm getting pulled out of my Rolodex of symbology. I feel like this presence is flashing the uh, Queen of Wands from the Tarot deck, that royalty um, figure. She's a queen. She's not a princess. So the Queen of Wands is typically um, depicted as an incredibly strong female intuitively. This is someone who stepped into their power, knows who they are, knows who they are not, um, and is ready to be that wise woman, ready to um, not apologize or be an, abashed about what she knows. She knows the truth. She hears the truth. Um, I'm, I'm hearing this word, and in the context it's being given me, it's incredibly um, complimentary in terms of archetype energy, but I'm hearing the word crone, moving into 
that strong medicine of someone who is in that second half of life energy um, in the medicine wheel. In my medicine wheel, that's the season of autumn. There's tremendous strength in knowing who you are now, knowing, you know, all the fears, all the trials, all the challenges, all the healings, all of it have combined to cause you to step into what you know now. And she says, you know what you know, and what you know is correct. You are correct. I think she's giving you checking off like scores, like psychic hit scores. Um, this is this is an A plus. You're you're right on, you're right on. Go do more, do more, do more. I hope that helps. Okay. I'm just reading your comments. Oh, it's so I love I love seeing all your names and your comments. I know I keep saying that, but I just love it. Um <laughs> okay. Elizabeth asks, could you please check on my sister Anne to see where she is on the other on the other? So I'm assuming you're mean on the other side and what she's doing. Oh, yeah, there you go. You right underneath you said on the other side. So you're so Elizabeth's sister and I just heard the word counseled. I'm being counseled. But to me, it looks like more about being in a classroom. Um, I feel like uh I feel like Anne smiles, like there's some humor, like kind of like, well, I'm being schooled. <laughs> and, and, and here's more humor. On the correct conduct, uh, you guys are talking about angels. So this is Anne coming in to say to you, um, I'm sorry, I'm losing your name. Okay, Elizabeth, Anne. Okay, so Anne comes rushing in to say, I've been here all night. And to say to you, um, you know, they work you when you get over here. And she's she's laughing. Um, she says, the the pearls of wisdom just drop on you like rain. I, I, you know, I think something and I have the answer. She says, I get to go back in time and see, you know, mother's mother, mother as she was young. I feel like, I feel like, um, Anne is showing me that she's loving the ability to almost travel in time, to go back to, she, she seems to be showing me ancestors in your family who traveled from one homeland to another. I feel like she's kind of on a history binge of ancestors. Um, she says, she says, to, she smiles and says, Anne, get this, all of you. Sometimes you get to learn you're, you were your own ancestor. So she says, who knew? So she's talking about, she's becoming aware of and getting to um, review her own previous lifetimes. And she's, she says, my, my mind is blown because I'm getting to realize I've been in the family before. She says a little more seriously, she says, so this is really helping me to heal some of the psychology I had about my life. I think she's getting some context and perspective that's helping her understand some of her own choices. Um, I'm asking her if she just has anything to more to say to you specifically. <laughs> I get, again, such a feeling of, you know, humor and contemporary talking because she says to you, don't sweat the small stuff, really. Don't make mountains out of these minute things. She says, I can't tell you how much that stuff doesn't matter. Just get, kick those pebbles and stones aside. She says, I want you to feel so much more carefree. Don't you worry too much. You worry too much. You worry too much. You worry too much. She says, I'm here to tell you, I can tell you with certainty. None of that. She's um, saying stuff or I'm saying stuff 
because she's saying another word. She's saying a different word that's not stuff. None of that stuff matters. I guarantee you. And then I feel like she goes, and I'll see you. I'll see you around. I'm doing great, but I'm working up here. So um, to me, again, she has such a feeling of lightness and humor. Um, and she's very personable to me. So I wonder if she was like that in life. Um, if she wasn't, boy, she sure has gotten some freedoms after having passed on. Okay, you guys, again, thank you for hanging out with me for over an hour now and listening to what it is I'm hearing. I hope this was fun and enjoyable and informative and healing. Again, I encourage you to stay about 10, 15 more minutes with me and we'll head into this exercise that I think you'll really like. So um, if you need to go, um, thank you so much for coming. I hope we'll meet again either here or in person or somewhere down the line. Um, you are each of you cherished. I'm so glad that you came. Um, and I wish you all the best. And if you're staying, okay, here we go. So again, I suggested you might want to keep paper and pencil handy. I'm going to show you the mudra first, even though that's what you're going to do second. I'm just going to give you a preview. So a mudra, if you don't already know, is a hand gesture. Simply put, it's a hand gesture that channels energy. So you've probably seen, you know, someone or, you know, oh, this is a mudra channeling energy. And there's hundreds, thousands of mudras. And so the one we're going to be working with tonight um, is asking, it's a mudra that is asking for divine guidance, which is what you're going to be doing here. Um, I felt like I just wanted to check comments in case anyone was trying to get my attention. Okay. So, oh, so tonight, if I didn't get to your question and do you put it, get it ready for this that you're about to do because your answer is coming if you didn't get an answer from me. So, so this mudra, um, I got to shift my mic here. So the, the gesture is basically is just cupped, let's see, cup, cupped hands. So, um, let's see, let me, how, how can I do this? So you want to cup your hands right in front of you. And you want to cup them so that, see these pinky fingers? There's a bit of a space. You want to keep that. So it's like a you're forming a cup, but that has a bit of an opening because of your pinkies. Okay, so this posture, this mudra is going to connect you to the crown chakra on top of your head. Um, so putting your hands together in front of, in front of your chest. Um, pinky fingers together, palms arcing toward the sky to form a two-handed cup. Leave a small opening between the sides of the little fingers. When you do that, have that down at your chest. You're going to look down your nose, soft, focus in your eyes, just gently, maybe half-lidded looking into that space between the pinkies, looking into that cup of divine guidance that's going to fall into your hands and just focusing on that open space. Um, so that's the position you're going to be in and that's what you're going to look for. That's going to be your focal point for getting the divine guidance. Now, this is no different than if you were, say, scrying, like looking into a crystal ball or looking into a pool of water or any other tool you might use to open up to your higher self to get divine wisdom. This is this mudra helps channel the energy and it's a focal point. You don't need to manufacture an answer. You don't need to effort for an answer. You're just going to have that soft focus in front of you with your cupped hands, looking down your nose softly, and then just start to pay attention to what you're hearing, feeling, knowing. And if you've never done something like this, I can tell you it, let it be easy, let it be natural. 
this is doesn't have to be this is certainly not a test i you know it's um it's just this will help you um focus and switch your energy so that your higher self and your spirit guides can just easily bring you information or impressions or messages that will be meaningful for you and helpful for you so this seeking guidance mudra you'll be using that in a minute so you don't have to do that quite yet, but I wanted to demonstrate that to you first. Okay, so now what we're going to spend the next five minutes doing is just a bit of it, very easy. This is just breathing deep, following my voice, and all I'm going to do is just have you move your attention from third eye to crown to throat to heart, and it's just you visioning your attention on these different parts. Um, there's a, a light component. So you'll be asked to envision light connecting from third eye to crown to throat to heart and closing that circuit. This five minutes will also involves um, deep breathing, which I will guide you through all of it. You get to sit back, relax, listen, and I will guide you through all of it. So it involves visualization, focusing, um, running light, and breathing. So it's going to be some deep breathing, hold, and exhale. All of this is meant to um, get your energies in a great place for becoming a receiver to the divine guidance. It also is going to activate these chakras to, to form those chakras will form a bowl to receive that information and you will be mirroring that bowl with your mudra. Um, this helps us shift into an alpha brainwave state, which helps you to connect with non-ordinary reality, meaning your higher self and your guides. Um, so, and it just feels really nice and it's, and it's, it's relatively easy um, if you've, again, if you've never done anything like this before, it will, will be new, but this is an easy, easy process, pretty quick. Um, and then come, when we come out, it's easy to come out of. Um, so I'm going to guide you through that. It takes about five minutes. I'll, while you're, while you get into that shifted energy state, I'll remind you of the mudra and all you'll do is then from the new alpha brainwave state, you'll just ask for that divine guidance. Now, if you want to ask for something very specific, like perhaps, again, you might have asked me a specific question tonight, which I didn't get to, you can put that up to divine guidance, or you can just open it up to a question of divine guidance, Divine guidance, please show me what it is I need to know right now. You can be very general. And then you just pay attention. And I'll give you guys a few minutes of, of quiet, and you can do that. And when you're getting some impressions, you feel like you've gotten your answer, I want you to take a minute and write it down. You'll be so glad you did. You might be surprised that you forget when you hang up from this YouTube and you go back into your quote, you know, normal self, you might miss kind of a lot that you got. So write it down. Okay. I think that's enough explanation. Let me put it out to all of you who are still here with me. Um, does anyone have any questions about the process before we begin? Is everyone ready? Can you just put a quick comment in? Okay, thanks, Amy. Thanks, Elizabeth, Helen, Audrey, Charmaine. Great. Okay. All right. And does everyone have paper and pencil nearby? Okay, here we go. And you can do this seated right in front of your monitor. You can close your eyes if you want. It might be helpful. So I want you to start by bringing your attention 
your consciousness to the area between your eyes. Third eye, brow chakra, right here. This is the seat of our intuitive perceptions. It is the center that facilitates physical vision of the subtle realms of life. So just bring your attention to the center of your forehead. Envision this area glowing, brilliant, crystalline light. And as you inhale, see and feel this area warm and brighten with this light. Hold for a count of 10, and then exhale slowly. So we're going to do that again, focusing on the third eye, the brow. Inhale, see warm, bright light in the third eye. Hold, hold. And exhale slowly. Deep inhale, focus on the brow. Hold. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Focus on the brow. Hold. And exhale. Now as you inhale, draw the light backward from the brow area through the head to a point near the crown of the head. This is the area of the crown chakra. This chakra awakens higher self-consciousness and union with the spirit, spirit realm. So inhale and imagine the ball of light moving backwards, forming a bridge of light between the brow and the crown chakra. See it and feel it as warm and shimmering with energy. So moving from the brow chakra, bridge of light to the crown chakra. And stay at the crown chakra, focus the light, inhale, and hold. Exhale. Inhale, focus on the crown. Hold. Exhale, and one more time. Inhale. Focus on the crown and hold. And exhale. Okay, great. Now bring your consciousness in the form of that brilliant light down to the throat. See this as a light-filled bridge extending from the crown to the throat. The throat is another major chakra or energy center. This center is aligned with our creative will and the ability for clear audience, which is hearing spirit. Focusing on the throat now, inhale. Feel this center come alive with light and brilliance and hold. Exhale. Inhale, focusing light on the throat and hold. And exhale, and one more time, inhale, ball of light in the throat, hold. And exhale. Now draw the consciousness and energy down from the throat to the area of the heart. And see this as yet another extension of the light bridge. Feel the area of the heart warm and begin to radiate with that crystalline light energy. 
Inhale in the heart and hold. Exhale. And when you're ready, inhale again in the heart, energy intensifying. Hold. Feeling the link that you formed with the three other chakras and exhale. Again, breathe into the heart. Hold. See the light bridge between all of the chakras. Hold. Exhale. And one more time, breathe into the heart and hold. And exhale. And now we're going to complete the circuit. So draw your consciousness and intention upward from the heart, back up to the third eye, the area of the brow. And this completes the light bridge that connects all the four centers. Feel these centers glowing with this intensity and focus, the energy that you've activated, the alignment with the bridge. So now you're at your brow. And now I would like for you to open your eyes softly, gaze down your nose into your cupped hands in front of your chest, looking through that small space between your pinky fingers. And now with silence, I would like for you to open up to divine guidance, the message from your higher self and spirit guides. Focus down the nose, soft, into the hole of the cupped hands and your pinkies, and just receive. And now allow the message to draw to a close. And when you're ready, turn to your paper and pen and just easily write down your impressions, whatever they are, whatever you thought or heard, felt or saw or know or remembered. Write it all down. I'll give you a couple of minutes.
Okay, let yourself wrap up your comments. And if any of you would like to share a little bit in the chat window, um, I think we'd all love any impressions. If not, that's fine too. If you just want to keep it to yourself, that's fine. Um, we'll just take another minute maybe to share any comments and then we'll wrap up all the way for tonight. So, um, and I'll comment if you leave comments, if I have any input. So Amy, I see, uh, I didn't feel or hear anything. Is there something I should have done differently? Well, first of all, I can say, you know, that may, some of that may be just the environment, you know, it's, um, even though I'm guiding you through all of it, it, it may be that for whatever reason, you just kind of weren't in the vibe for it. Perhaps the, you know, the brain waves were still kind of clicking from, you know, the day of the work day or what you have to do tomorrow. There could be a lot of reasons why it just didn't click, you know, just kind of like anytime you are meditating or doing anything, you know, sometimes you're in the zone, sometimes you're not. I wouldn't say that you didn't, do anything wrong or should have done it differently. I mean, first of all, because I don't know what you did. But secondly, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry if you got nothing because, you know, this is probably maybe completely new. You maybe have never walked through this. So I would say um, stay open to your dreams tonight, Amy. Um, keep that paper nearby. It, there might be just a bit of a delay. It may be that when you go into the sleep state, that's finally when the message can get through. So I keep keep your paper and pen handy. And if you want, you can just kind of uh, this this AMA will be, you know, on my YouTube channel. You can come listen to the last, you know, 10, 20 minutes and do it again if you want. But don't worry about it. Not everyone can really get into the zone in a in a format like this. Um I tried to get a sages before didn't work. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. You might want to restate Charmaine. A big thank you. I felt a lot of emotions, tears of relief and comfort. That's lovely. You know, that's, I'm so glad Julia, you shared that because, you know, some of the message or the healing might not need to be a message. It might just be an energy relief and a release or a cord coming on, on, a uh, unhooked a block clearing. So that's great. Um, howling yoga. I saw a candle lit in the center as all of us sat in a circle receiving the blessings from tonight's gathering. I love that. You know, uh, that's how I've seen all of you, all of us tonight. Um, I mean, I'm on, on one hand, I'm aware of my monitor and my mic and all of this, but on the other hand, where I really live this past hour and a half has been in circle with all of you. So that's great. Warmness in the chest, Charmaine, still warmness in the chest, didn't get messages before did this time. Oh, wonderful. Oh, you guys, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for being here. I so appreciate meeting in this way. And I hope, I hope tonight has given you lovely food for thought and some lovely, lovely feelings, information, healing. Um, I don't know when I'll do this again, but if, when I do, um, like I said at the top of the session tonight, I um, tend to do this about once per quarter. But if you are on my mailing list, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll get a notification. You can always go to my website and there's updates there. That's MeganO'Leary.com. Um, other than that, I just wish each one of you all the best. I hope all brings to you the answers you're looking for. Um, again, you might, you know, we've been sitting here quite a while. And even though I've been doing mo mo most of the talking, you know, all of you have gotten a bit altered in your state too. So you might just keep not just Amy, you might all of you just keep your notebooks handy. It may be this sleep cycle, depending on your time zone that you're heading into. Um, that I wouldn't be surprised if you guys got some, all of you got some more downloads. So I would encourage you to pay attention to the signs and symbols, particularly over this next 12, 24 hours, I think there's a good chance what you're noticing and hearing and learning, what someone 
who pops up in your life tomorrow says, and I just thought I would tell you this, it might relate to tonight. So I would pay particular attention or any of those feathers flying, floating down. Um, you're all very welcome. Thank you for your time and healing abilities. Thank you, Amy. It's so good to have you here. It's so good to have you all here. I'm going to say a quick closing prayer. And I'd love for each one of you who did this exercise with me, I want you to come back fully. If you haven't already, come back into the present moment. So take a moment, take a deep breath into your body, make sure your eyes are open, focus around your room. I want you to get grounded, get sharp, feel your feet on the ground, maybe move your spine a little bit, take a deep breath. I just want you to come back to the present moment, where you're at, the room you're in. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to just say a closing prayer. Oh, Creator, Mother, Father, God, all that is, thank you as always for all of the good healing medicine that came through tonight. Creator, we are so deeply grateful for your gifts, for the ability to be healed and guided through the presence of our souls, the presence of our inner selves, the presence of angels and helping spirits, the presence of those that we love in spirit. We thank you for all of it. We are embracing the gifts. We are embracing the wisdom and presence of everyone who joined us here tonight. Thank you to each soul who entered into this circle. And now that we are closing the circle, we emerge each one of us back into our own original medicine, our own sacred hoops, spirit, all that is, ancestors, thank you. We send you home, we close every door that was open, and we say this circle is now complete, a home, Tapi Wasson. Thank you all here. It's the, the sun is set. It's evening and uh, wherever you are and whatever time zone you're in, I wish you all the best, whether a good night's sleep or a great start to your day. Thanks again for being here. Much love to you all. And I'll see you next time. Bye.